Hi, hello, and welcome. Welcome to another Marty's Minute Meditations. If you're a new listener to the podcast, thanks for joining. Thank you for gracing the space with your presence. Now, you may be ready to start up a different podcast, maybe one with that inspirational person you always listen to. You know the one. They always say the same thing. But you listen to them over and over anyway. Well, Marty can be really inspirational too, okay? And people from all over the world tune into Marty's Minute Meditations. That's right. So get to know me a little bit before you decide to go another way. Maybe Marty can be the inspiration you need today. Maybe he is the friend that you could really use right now. So if you decide to traverse this path, then hop aboard our spaceship. We're going to journey into the void to ask the important questions. Choose a spot. Get cozy. Maybe set up next to one of Marty's regular listeners. Meet someone new. Knock on their aura. Hey, knock, knock. How's it going over there? I'm new. I'm new to the spaceship. To this meditation ship. And I think we're both a little new to this friendship. Isn't that nice? that a friendship could start that easily, just with a gentle knock and a hello. Don't worry. Marty's regular listeners are wonderful people. I haven't truly spoken to many of them, but I'm sure they are wonderful people. But you never know. Sometimes Marty wonders what his regular listeners are like. Sometimes Marty worries that someday one of his listeners will go and commit some strange atrocity to one of nature's great creatures. The police will finally find them, and when they apprehend him, they'll ask, why did you do this awful thing? Didn't you ever think of the turtles when you were doing this to them? Did you ever think about how they were feeling? And that man, and it will be a man, because only a man would do such an awful thing to turtles. That's right, Marty's saying it. Call Marty sexist, but Marty believes only a man would do such horrific things to turtles. And if you have evidence to declare the opposite, please send it to Marty at martysminutemeditations.com. If you have information to the contrary that would prove me wrong, then let's see it. Now, this is not an open invitation for women to harm turtles, all right? No one should harm turtles because they have feelings too. They have them. So I'm going full stop because I'm afraid someday they'll catch this, you know, turtle torturer because they didn't just kill them easy. No, put them out of their misery. They made a show of it. They filmed it. Use little tools to torture these precious little turtles. Maybe they associated it with some sexual acts. Ugh, God. It just makes Marty feel sick inside. Marty doesn't want to think about it. But Marty worries that that man or woman will just answer to the police officer, I did this because Marty from Marty's Minute Meditations told me to do it. And that's all that Marty needs is another lawsuit on his hands. So I just want to say right off the bat, Marty does not condone any kind of harmful behavior, especially to turtles. They're beautiful animals. They truly are. So anyway, make a friend while you're on this ship. Isn't that nice that a friendship could start that easily, just with a gentle knock and a hello? You know, we avoid friendships every day. We pass by people. We don't even look them in the eye. We don't even give them a smile. That's a lost friendship. That friendship has sailed away. (sighs) To old listeners, thanks for coming back. It's great to have you aboard as always. This ship continues to get bigger and bigger, and so too does Marty's heart. It's really amazing. He's happy to have a little community that's open to this journey because Marty wants to give you this journey. It's really important to Marty. So if you want to support Marty, please consider becoming a monthly donor on Patreon. Becoming a donor gives you some lovely perks, like your own personal mantra written and recorded for your listening pleasure by Marty himself. Or a list of videos or books Marty has been investigating for that month. Or even deleted segments or fully unreleased episodes all together. But if you're afraid of a commitment, that's all right. Marty understands. That's why he has a PayPal account and a Buy Me a Coffee account. So you can make a one-time donation. This way, if you think, oh, I really liked this episode, this was really nice, you can give a dollar, dollar an episode. That keeps Marty's spirit going. 
Marty also understands we're in really tough times, so you can also support him by just telling your friends and family about his meditations. Just spread the word. Spread the word of Marty. Speaking of the word of Marty, there's also a new episode of Moments with Marty out there on the YouTube called Hope. If you want to check that out, just click on the YouTube link. All of those links will be in the episode description. Or you could just visit Marty's website. Now, with all of that being said, let's prepare for takeoff and venture out to the void of Marty's Minute Meditations. The reflection of perfection. What do you see when you look in the mirror? Do you see a work of art? Maybe you imagine that your body is on a pedestal. It's under the warm glow of museum lights. Your body is a statue, like the David catching the glimpses of hundreds of onlookers a day. Wow, look at that piece of art. Isn't that beautiful? Look how his hands reflect his stoicism. Look how his biceps represent his masculinity. His eyebrows, what are they saying? That's you up there. Except you're not the David. No, you're the Henry. The Giovanni, the Chen, the Mohammed, the Sven. Whoever you are, you're the work of art. You're handsome. You're a work of art. Every part of you was crafted with purpose, and it's yours. Your hair, your nose, your jaw. That's all yours. Your arms, your belly, your manhood. Your body is the main attraction. Like the David, your body stands for something. It represents strength, honor, nature, masculinity. That's what the David represents, right? Isn't it great to have a work of art that reflects those qualities? Marty doesn't think so. Maybe when you look at your reflection, you don't see yourself on a pedestal. You don't see that work of art. You aren't the reflection of perfection. At least that's what it feels like. The mirror only reflects back to you exactly what you don't want to be. Maybe you wake up in the morning and you walk into the bathroom and look into that mirror and go, here I am again. I'm still me. That's still my body. That's what's reflected back, first and foremost. The initial layer we have to come up against in our reflection of ourself is of our body. We are overwhelmed with insecurities about our body. We can pick out even the most minute aspects of ourselves and make them a flaw. Maybe when you're at the gym, you do your workout and immediately look to your reflection. Am I bigger yet? Are the muscles there yet? I did 100 push-ups. Shouldn't I look stronger right now? What happened? I was working out. Isn't this how I get muscles? Lose weight? Get this nice jaw that I'm looking for? What reflects off of that mirror? It's not you. It's not who you really are. It's not the work of art. It's your thoughts. Your doubts, they all enter the mirror of your mind. How do you reflect back on yourself? We are all flawed. What makes a flaw a flaw? A flaw cannot exist without comparison. 
a comparison to something we see as perfect. The flaw is the step away from that perfect. A pimple, a birthmark, a little belly pouch. We all have our bodies, and they exist as they are. Do we choose to live in our body, or do we choose to be tormented by their reflection? Do you see your body? Do you see it when you look into the mirror of our world? The mirror reflects back what it deems is perfect. What do we as men see out there on the Instagrams, the YouTube, the TikTok, in the superhero movies, on the cover of the cool guy magazines? What is that reflection we receive? It reflects back society's perfect man, a perfect man to create our perfect flaws. Do you see your body? Do you feel represented? Or do you feel like you get bombarded with messaging that makes you ashamed to have your body? You know, Marty doesn't feel like those male models out there with their works of art speak to me. Mr. Joe 8-Pack with his big biceps and his large hands. Is that you? Do you feel like Joe? I know your name might be Joe, but Joe's, do you feel like Joe 8-Pack? There's a different Joe up there with a different body, different chemistry, a different mind, a different spirit. Can you, Joe, be that Joe? Can you? Can anyone be that Joe? Accept that Joe. Is it possible to achieve that work of art? Do you respect your body? Sometimes we just don't feel confident with our bodies. We feel frustrated with our bodies. We feel ashamed of our bodies. And it's because society keeps pressuring us to have the bodies of some Joe, right? Marty gets it. That's why he brings it up. He wants to create the space where you can feel comfortable to say that. Because, men, we don't get to say that very often, do we? We don't get to say how society pressures us. How we need to risk our health to build a more manly body. Forget those Instagram models who say, just do this and you'll get it. Easy for you to say, Joe 8-Pack. But for me, for regular old Joe, I can't reach that level. To the level of somebody who doesn't have to work a day job. And just get to work out and drink protein shakes all day. Wouldn't that be nice? Wouldn't it be nice to have the lifestyle to build a work of art? You know, some of us don't have the resources to create that work, right? So, some of us don't have the marble, the embroidered tile. Some of us don't have Michelangelo to come in and chip away the pounds to reveal muscles on our body, right? Some of us just have a work of art that was built from the clay in the ground. Some of us have to work really hard just to push that clay and make that clay into a beautiful body to revere. We don't have the resources that all these highfalutin works of art have, okay? We're all the muddy, crumbly statues on the Instagrams, you know, the superhero movies, in those cool guy magazines. I guess they don't stand the test of time. Do you respect your body? These perfect men who have these perfect works of art, they're fawned over by women. Why must we men be victims of the female gaze, hmm? All ladies who like to touch up on the muscles. Yeah, don't deny it, ladies. I know. We've seen it. It's okay. It's not wrong to embrace the body of the man. But we see how you ladies look at those bodies. Touching up on the biceps. Just feeling your hands across the eight-pack abs. Slapping their tushes. You know, there are some regular old Joes out there that would love to be sexually harassed like that. Now, Marty doesn't condone that. Marty doesn't condone any kind of sexual harassment in any way. But sometimes, you know, Marty, you know, would like that attention sometimes. Not that it's okay. You're not allowed to touch someone inappropriately. And that goes across all genders. Marty just wants to say that because he doesn't want to be held accountable for any kind of sexual harassment that happens to any men out there. Men are going to start emailing me and go, you know, Marty, I didn't really appreciate how you said men want to be slapped on the tush because they don't. Marty might. By the right lady. He'd like that. You know, he'd like to, his tush to feel important. Great tush. That's what Marty would like. Because, you know, women think it's all innocent and nice. But what does it do to the man that is being harassed? And what does it do to the other men out there that don't feel like they have the muscles? Or the looks? Or the charm? Or the strength? Or the confidence? Or the hair? Or lack of hair? Or the big hands? Or the big feet? Or, you know, those nice tushes? Larger lingams. What about the men out there that see that, hmm? 
Makes him feel pretty small and weak. Create your work of art. Even something as far back as The David. That piece of work that is ancient, but still plagues our society with a reflection of perfection. That's some male body propaganda right there. Look at that beautiful work of art. That's a sign of manhood. Well, what if I can't reach that body? Am I then not a man? You know what we should do, men? And this is a call to action. We should take down all those beautiful statues that are propaganda of manhood and the male body. It's just Western art colonizing our minds, creating misconceptions about the male body. We should take them down because those are destroying society. Those are wrong. Telling all the men out there that this is what you need to be. Otherwise, you should hate yourself. You're not a work of art if you don't look like this. I don't see any Greek or Roman statues of men with, you know, body hair. No, their bodies are all smooth. They can go for a swim. They're going to need a swim cap, though, because their head is a forest of golden locks. Somehow they have this beautiful head of hair, but their body is devoid of it. Maybe the Greeks and Romans weren't really thinking about the reality of the situation. Or maybe their bodies were just bald. Well, good for them. Good for you. Go for a swim. But Marty, Marty can't do that. Marty would have to shave his whole body. David just looks like some prepubescent boy up there. <sighs> now, Marty doesn't condone the taking down of those statues. Because in the same way, if we take down those statues, we once again disrespect the male body. We say, no, that's not perfect. But if we say that that's not perfect, we say that there is a perfect out there. When there is a possibility of perfect. We are all the possibility of perfection. That's why we should be offended, men, by all those statues and works of art out there that represent masculinity and give us the perfect man and brain soil women into thinking that that is what they're attracted to. Because, you know, it's not right to tell women what to find attractive. But David's so great, right? He just, you know, walks out of his apartment with a different beautiful woman every weekend. David's just so cool and suave, and he always looks so muscular, and he's just so nice. He always says hi to me. You. He always, he always says hi to you. He always says hi to you. And he just seems to have it all figured out, you know? But maybe David is tortured. Maybe he's a tortured soul. Maybe David is so busy trying to live up to the reflection of perfection that he isn't doing as well as he thinks he is. Maybe David gets caught in the mirror. Maybe he's haunted by how he will look every morning. Oh no, I'm at 15% body fat. That's awful. Looks like it's a fasting day. Maybe David never feels like he's enough for people. Maybe he goes to bed crying every night. That's sad. I don't want David to be sad. So what would Marty say to David? So caught up in being the David. He would say, You are a work of art. We are all works of art. And maybe David needs to be offended. Maybe he needs to say, Hey guys, stop pressuring us. Hey magazines. Hey Instagrams. Hey superhero movies. I don't see me in there. I don't see my body hair. I don't see my little belly, little belly pouch. I pat my belly pouch and I like it. I don't want to get rid of that belly pouch. I don't need any eight pack, six pack, four pack. I'm content with the single pouch I have right here. I may not say that to it in the mirror. I may not say, I love you, to my little belly pouch. But maybe if Marty wasn't pressured so much by these male models, these reflections of perfection, he wouldn't have to yell at his belly. He wouldn't have to yell at his tiny little hands out of frustration and a sense of inadequacy. They may be tiny, but they can still do stuff. Social media, movies, magazines. Oh, and, and then there's pornography. Oh, don't get me started on pornography. How unbelievably demeaning it is to men pornography. They don't even show our heads, our faces. Even when they do, our expressions are just filled with anger and frustration. Like we don't want to be there. You're making love to a beautiful woman or man. We're not gender conforming individual. You're blessed by the universe to be in physical communion with this individual. And you're angry and frustrated. No, that's demeaning to us men. And who is it? Who's up there pumping away? 
It's our old friend, Joe 8-Pack, with his big muscles and his aggression. That's all he can feel. Why don't I see regular Joe up there making love to someone, seeing his head, his expressive face, just happy to be there? Or else we just see his abs and his lingam going in and out and in and out. Is that all we are, men? Just a torso with a penis? Maybe that's all we're allowing ourselves to be, especially when we're sexual. We're not allowed to be feeling beings when we're sexual. We're just headless automatons that follow our programming. Animals that only go into it to release our seed. Ugh. And, and they just make those aggressive sounds like, Ugh, and, ooh, and, eh. Well, you know, Marty doesn't like to make those sounds. It's just the thought of the whole thing makes Marty uncomfortable, really. Which is why Marty just can't watch pornography. And so it was really hard for Marty to explore that particular thing in preparation for this episode. It was tough. I had to look away a lot and hold my ears at certain moments. It was just, it was rough, okay? Men, we have so many reflections of perfection out there. It's almost like we're in a room of mirrors surrounded by reflections of ourselves. But are they you? Do you feel like you are truly reflected in the world? Or do you feel like those reflections of perfection hold you back from being the perfect you. So for today's meditation, I want us to take a moment to peer into these mirrors of the mind. Take a breath in and a breath out and a breath in and a breath out. Close your eyes as long as you aren't driving or operating heavy machinery. And let's take a journey into this room of mirrors. Let's open the door and step in. It's a dark room. Only one little dot of light from the doorway begins to appear in the room. And it appears in multitudes. And as if you hit a light switch... These mirrors turn on to reflect you, to show you. What do they reflect? Reflections of reflections, reflections of reflections of you. So many reflections that you don't know which of the reflections was the original reflection. These reflections are the only way you can see yourself. But the images are distorted. Each mirror takes away a little bit of detail, a little bit of truth, a little piece of who you truly are. And just as in real life, we can't look away from our reflection. We're obsessed with it. It's not just the mirror, but the pictures we constantly take of ourselves, the videos we post on the internet, how does a rectangle of glass reflect to the world who you are? Here's my reflection, you say. How do I look, world? Am I a reflection of perfection? What does the world reflect back to you? What do they say? Your nose looks like a witch. Ow. Ow. That hurts. That hurts my feelings. And now when you return to this room of mirrors, a new mirror has appeared with a new flaw. Now you will always see yourself with a witch nose. And as you look around this room, you begin to see every flaw the world says you have. A big belly, hairy hands, stick legs. Because it is the lack of what the world sees as perfect. The reflection is a lie. It's lying to you. This room begins to feel like a prison. Why would you build a prison in your own home? In the home of your mind? A prison padded with the voices that also reflect off the mirrors. You built this room. You put these mirrors here. Who are you, Reflection? Who are you really? What do you want from me? We are you. 
You welcomed us into your home. Now we live here. We are everything you want to be. I wish I was muscular. I wish my hair was cooler. I'm weak. I'm worthless. Wherever you go, there's a mirror to show you everything you can never be. A mirror to show you how you see people, how you expect people to be. Their bodies. Their behavior. Their beliefs. Please. I just want to leave. I just want to be free. I don't want to feel this way. You are a lie. I must break you. Go away, mirrors. Go away. These mirrors keep you from truly seeing people, seeing yourself. You must see the world and what you can truly be. Not what society tells you is perfect, but what you find perfect. If you get rid of these mirrors, you can see what the perfect you is. Free from the reflections given by the world, by other people. Perfection is not a reflection. It is a seed that is sown by you, grown within you, and once bloomed, is picked by you to place in the vase of your mind. It is better to be a man, a woman, a non-gender conforming individual of your own making than a reflection of flaws that is made manifest from society. Do you know what society tells you is perfect? Or are you brain soiled into thinking that you are truly what you are? Every part of you was crafted with purpose and it's yours. All yours. You can do as you please with it. But when you do, remember to ask yourself, am I trying to fit that reflection of perfection or am I respecting the piece of art that is my being? If we see a reflection of perfection, we will always be flawed. But if we break that mirror and we sweep up the pieces, maybe we can see beyond this room of mirrors. Maybe we can reflect back to the world a sense of love, truth, and belonging in our own bodies. Thank you for listening to this meditation. I hope you join us next time on this spaceship. But until then, I'll be here, waiting, ready to meditate.